Yup, YouTube is broken on the Firefox shipped with Fedora. No, you didn't just open a video from 2009. In 2024, the Firefox shipped with Fedora cannot open YouTube videos. Hello everyone, this is IK. As you can tell, I am experimenting with this AI voice generation thing because when the robots win World War III and end up as our new AI overlords, I want to be in their good books. Anyways, as you will not recall because you have a life, two years ago I made a video on Fedora Linux. Now, as I record this, a new version of Fedora Linux, Fedora Linux 40, was released just today. Obviously, because I am such a dedicated YouTuber, just kidding, I wanted to try KDE Plasma 6. I downloaded the ISO from the website and installed Fedora 40 on my main laptop. I like to test new distros on my actual hardware because A, it gives me the actual experience of using it for my actual work, instead of just test driving it on a VM, and B, it makes me back up my data to an external drive, which I otherwise don't because I am too lazy. Now, in my last video I harped on for quite long about Fedora Linux's installer, Anaconda, which remains unchanged to this day. Now look. This makes sense when there are like 10 or 15 items and I only want to touch a few of them. And three options were given. Automatic, Custom and Advanced Custom Blivet GUI. The fact that I already have Debian installed means that I already have a boot and a swap partition. And I just need to make room for a root partition. Which I did after it told me there wasn't enough space to install Fedora. Is that unlike practically every distro I have used till date. The Fedora installer, in fact, does not want us to provide it with a partition to install onto. In my experience, Anaconda is by far the least intuitive and usable installer for a Linux distro in 2024, and that includes installing Arch Linux by hand. Between that video and this, I have installed Fedora multiple times, and each time I have failed to set up a dual boot system because their partitioner unlike every other partitioner in the world, wants me to create free, unpartitioned space on the drive which it then creates a partition in, instead of me creating the partition and selecting what should go where. Also, it has some weird phobia of the word delete, because it tells you to reclaim space instead. The other problem I had with Fedora was DNF. DNF is the RPM-based package manager used by Fedora, Red Hat, and other related distros. In my experience, DNF is the slowest package managers among them all. It insists for some reason to check for updates every single time I run a command for it. And unlike Debian, which is the distro I have been using for years now, its package lists are often above 60 to 70 MBs in size, whereas Debian's rarely exceeds a few megabytes. Now in metropolitan Europe, this might not be that much of a problem, but in a tier two city in India with a BSNL connection, it is a recipe for running out of chronology. Both of these problems do have solutions. DNF's new version, DNF5 is set to increase performance, and Anaconda is set to get a new UI. Both of these changes are coming in Fedora 41, so thankfully you only have around six months to experience the trueness of my rants. Now, here's one thing that I haven't mentioned yet. I didn't download regular Fedora Workstation. I downloaded the new Atomic Desktop operating system. Atomic Desktop is basically a fancy word for the Android model, where the main operating system and the desktop environment is updated all together every once in a while, and the end user can only create and modify data in their home directory. The only way to install new applications is by Flatpak, bypassing DNF altogether. I really like this way of doing Linux very much, because not only does it idiot-proof the core OS to prevent system-wide crashes, but it also means that finally there is only one way to get apps, the far superior and secure Flatpak, instead of the same apps being available both through Flatpak and the distro. Or so I thought. The thing is, Fedora Atomic only ships Flatpak, the package manager, not Flathub, the repo with all the software. Instead of regular Flathub, Fedora uses a repo which it calls Filtered Flathub, which does not contain applications which may cause legal issues for Fedora in terms of things like licenses and patents. 
Now, this doesn't seem like that much of an issue, but that is because what you haven't realized yet is that the media codex, the software responsible for processing video and audio of some of the most popular file formats like MP4, are patented. So, to get around the patent issue, Fedora pre-installs a custom version of Firefox without any patented codex, which means, drum roll please, yup, YouTube is broken on the Firefox shipped with Fedora. No, you didn't just open a video from 2009. In 2024, the Firefox shipped with Fedora cannot open YouTube videos. To be fair, the fix for this is quite simple. On Discover, the App Store for the KDE Desktop, there is a button to add the Flathub repo. After that, it is only a matter of installing the version of Firefox on Flathub, which will automatically replace the broken Fedora one and includes the missing codex. Of course, Discover did crash when I tried to open the Flathub page for Firefox, but that's what you get when you try a distro on the day of its release. The Fedora developers are only human, so I installed the new version through the terminal. Now, I don't know why Fedora in particular is so iffy with codecs. Debian, for instance, has no such issues. Despite also having a very hardline open source only policy, Debian only started shipping non-free firmware in 2023. But I think that instead of shipping a broken version of Firefox, they should simply give the users an option to enable Flatpak at first boot. And then if they choose to enable it, replace Firefox with the Flathub version. Or, at the very least, they should inform users that MP4S are broken on their side up front, which would have saved me the time I spent troubleshooting YouTube. The good news is that unlike in the previous installment, this is, as far as I can tell, the extent of the issues. Fedora Kanoit, which is the name for the KDE version of Atomic Desktop, is surprisingly polished and stable. KDE 6, of course, is wonderful, and it's awesome to already see it on a mainstream distro and issues I have had with Fedora Atomic in the past with things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth seem to be gone. The distro is quick to boot and shut down. It doesn't have too much bloatware stuffed in it, and its internal update manager is fast and does not get in my way. Overall, except for the codec issue which I recognize is not in their hands, Fedora Kanoit 40 is a decent choice for users who don't want to mess about with their system too much and also want to try out KDE Plasma 6. Anyways, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, acknowledge the supremacy of the robot kind, and pray to your new lord and savior, U11000110110100.